Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing default game engine tutorial series. Today we're going to be taking a look at sprites and animation. Now we've already covered sprites a little bit, but we're going to go into a lot more depth about how to actually create them. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Now before we get too far in, I want to remind you, first off, there's a text version of every single one of these tutorials available on Game From Scratch. Uh, if not up now, it will be up very, very shortly. Um, second is, each one of these tutorial parts assumes you have seen or read the previous part parts in this tutorial series. So um, I will build on things that I've already discussed and I won't be going over them again. So if I lose you somewhere, uh, please do check earlier tutorial parts to make sure that it's not something I've already covered. And if I just lost you, do let me know and I'll try to address it in the comments down below. All right, without further ado, I'm going to jump right in. Now this is a standard project. I've just created a uh, pretty much another blank project to start with and then once again you can see here's this default atlas it created for us um, so we've got the here's our collection and it's drawing this one sprite so we've already seen this in action uh, this is a sprite it's created as an image in here in the images folder called logo.png and it is contained in an atlas file now we're going to go ahead and get rid of all that because we're going to do this all from scratch don't worry it's a very simple process but um, it makes sense to start it from scratch so go ahead and delete both of those and then we'll go to our game object here. So you've got this error message, right? Because it can't find the actual uh, sprite that was attached to it. So we'll get rid of that as well. So now we basically just have a collection which we can use, you know, to store our level data, etc. cetera. Um, and that's it. So now we need to go ahead and create an atlas and build our sprites out from there. Now there are two ways you can go about using sprites for animation. Um, and we're gonna look at both of them today. So uh, yeah, let's jump in. So first off, we need to go ahead and actually create an atlas. Now an atlas is really just a collection of images. The nice thing is um, the default engine will do the work behind the scenes to optimally pack it together and you know position those images in a way that is optimal for the GPU and internal use in the game engine. But an atlas really is just a collection of images together in a single file. So we're gonna go ahead and create our atlas and we'll call it walker. That'll make sense later on. Uh, we're basically bringing in a walker the set of graphics. So there we've gone. Now next up we're actually going to need those graphics. Now if you're a Patreon backer, uh, we're going to use an example I've already made available. Now you can use whatever sprite sheet you want. Uh, one uh, common free option is uh, Kenny.nl. Uh, he's created a series of game sprites, but like I said, if you're a Patreon backer, uh, just head over to the, the Dropbox, go into Art, Animated Characters, uh, Sprite Sheets, and we're going to go ahead and use uh, this raw and we're just going to use this walk cycle I created before so just grab all those images like so just drag and then drop them on your images folder again you can use whatever sequence of sprites you want uh, this is just you know an easy example I want and if you want a lot of these are actually available on game from scratch as well just uh, just do a search there I don't know why there's an error here I cannot write put resource data in 28 I'm not really sure why an error just occurred, but we just had problems copying image 28. 28 is that frame. Let's just, I don't know, try again. And it worked that time. Don't know what that error was, uh, but hopefully that doesn't occur for you. So now we've got all these images available. Now these are just images that have been physically copied into our project now. They're not in the Atlas as of yet. So they're just, they're available to us, however. So now we go back to our Atlas here. Uh, let's double click that guy so it's open in the editor over here. And you'll see Atlas. And we can go ahead and right click and we can go add images. Now in this case, though, I'm not gonna just add images. I'm actually gonna add an animation group. So that's the second option here. So we're gonna add animation group and we'll rename it Walk. All right, so we just added an animation group named Walk. Now right click it and choose add images. You'll see here, we're just gonna collect all of the walk images we just used a second ago. And done. So now what you've seen is, um, basically the default engine just came in and packed them ideally for us. So this is all gonna get compiled into a single images. It's, it's single image, uh, it's faster, it's behind the scenes. It's not really something you need to worry about, so don't worry about it too much. But basically it has done the organization for us. So the way they're aligned or shaped, etc., is a very little meaning to you. It doesn't matter to you. Uh, just assume that the fold is doing the right thing here. So now that we have all these images available, let's go ahead and click save there. We'll go back to our walk here. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go up here and switch to, instead of playback as once forward, we're gonna do instead 
uh, loop forward. So now our walk animation is going to loop continuously as we go in the one direction. Now I can actually, da, 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 da. all right, so let's not just do what I just did. I don't want a single frame. So here, I come up here and you see I've got this, uh, so right clicking the walk animation up here, I've got this play and stop animation. So I click that guy and there's a preview of the animation that this um, Atlas is going to actually generate for us. So this animation group walk creates this particular set of animation out of these images. So now we have our single animation. How do we go about using it in our scene? Well, that is brutally simple. Uh, we go back to our level here and we go to our collection. We're gonna add a game object. So our game object, we'll call this guy um, walking guy, like so. And we add to it a component, make that component of type sprite, like so. And pick our image for said sprite, like walker.atlas. So we're just, we're basically saying our image, is, our image source is walker.atlas and we'll go okay. And then our default animation is walk. So that again is just this atlas, with this animation group. So now we come back here, let's do a save there, head on back here. So now we can see our guy set up here. Now, if you wanna go ahead and move this guy around, so position it in the world. So here's your world origin, it's right here. So we wanna do it the bottom left origin of our screen. Uh, you can press the W key to go into move mode and just let's drag him over so he's at the edge. And now if we go ahead and play our game, There you go. And that is how easy it is to do sprite animations in default. Like it's, it's a very, very simple, straightforward process. Now I'm gonna show you one other way to go about doing this. So sometimes you'll have another way of images. And I'm gonna go back to the same collection here. I'm going to the generic here. And this is a very common thing. It basically is you put all of your frames of animation together in a pre-generated grid of sprites, like we see here. So these are you know various frames of animation all split across. And I'm just gonna take one of these as an example. We're just gonna copy it over to images. So I'm gonna grab this sequence of frames. They're in gibberish order, by the way, so we're gonna get some weird results from this. But I'm gonna show you how you can basically use an image sheet of your own generation or of your own creation um, to in turn populate an animation. So we're gonna bring this guy over into our project and we'll drop that into the images folder. All right, so now we're gonna come up here and go new instead of an atlas file, we're gonna go ahead and create something called a tile source file. Pick that and we'll call this, I don't know, walker tiles. Okay, so now we have this new type called a tile source. And you'll see over here, tile source has a couple of settings. First off, we have a default animation that's been created for us. We'll call this guy uh, janky walk because it's uh, the animation frames are awful. Uh, so that's actually not gonna work well. But we're gonna come back to our original tile source. And the first thing we do is select the image source. So that was a file I brought in called Sprite Sheet 20. And there you go. So what you can see here basically is all of the different frames and it's being generated into a whole lot of different tiles. That's because the default set for these tiles is 16 by 16. Whereas in reality, each of these guys is 512 pixels wide and 384 pixels high. Like so. So once I've actually set those to valid values, you can now see that we've got each one of these frames is properly framed from our tile source. Uh, so now I can say back to our janky walk, and you see here it's set to start tile is one, end tile is one. What we wanna do is change that instead to one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So our end tile is now 12. So it's gonna use this whole frame of animation and I'm gonna do once forward. Now I told you these frames actually are Yankee. So we're not gonna get a good result, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you now. So if we right click, we can do play, and there's the end result. So that was once forward. So instead what we wanna do probably is uh, loop. Go ahead and play it instead. I click, play, and there you can see. So it's not looping well, because again, this is not a full animation sequence. It's only a couple of the frames. Um, so if you had a proper tile sheet, this would work exactly the same way. And then now that that's done, uh, to actually go ahead and use it, we just go back to our collection. And for example, we've already got our walking guy, so we'll create another guy. And we'll call this um, 
different guy. Okay, and we will go ahead and add a game object to it. Once again, it's still a sprite though. And it's the same sort of setup. So image now, instead of being uh, walker.atlas, we're using walkertiles.tilesource, like so. Uh, and now our default animation is actually not anim. Oh, I didn't save yet, just a sec. Go back here, click save. And now we come back and it will be much happier with us. So we pick janky walk. And once again, using the W key, you can move him somewhere else. Now this, this is called janky walk for good reasons, uh, because uh, like I said, it's, it's not a very uh, smooth frame of animation. Now something else that's cool though about the tile source, especially, and we'll get back to this later on when we talk about physics, but you can do something called a bounding volume in physics. And the neat thing with uh, the default engine is you can actually have it generated automatically. So this is the um, physics bounding boxes. And you don't really see a whole lot going on here, but I can come here and go add collision. Oops, no, that's not what I want to do. Uh, I want to go back to the main source, to the tile source, come here and go to see here at the bottom, we've got collision. And there's a couple other things I should actually point out to you while I'm here. As you'll see, there's also these margins and spaces, borders and padding. So you can actually have a fixed spacing in between your grid of tiles. And this is where you would set those particular values. I have none. So there's each tile is exactly its size. There's no padding between them, etc. But if you did have those things, you would set them here. And we're gonna use this later on when we create something called a tile map. So we'll be revisiting this to a certain degree. So we'll come back there. But if you wanna have collisions, you can actually have um, the default engine generate those collision volumes for you. This is basically a polygon that defines the outside shape of each frame of animation. And this is pretty cool. I just come up here, go to collision, and click dot 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 and I pick my sprite sheet and it automatically went through and created the minimum size bounding shape or semi minimum I guess it could have cut in here a little bit uh, but keeping the polygon count to a reasonable limit and automatically just created it for us so you can see each frame of animation you can see how it's nicely uh, for collision shapes now defined for us so that is one of the cool features of uh, the default engine and of uh, tile sources in general so if you do have collision in your and you're going to start doing you know instead of having it collide with this entire empty space it is now nicely bound down to the shape itself so that's a cool feature there that we will explore at a later date but finally let's go ahead and save that and come back here and we will go ahead and run and you'll see we have our good animation and our very janky animation, but those are the two different ways you can do sprite-based animations. Now, uh, one of the things you saw back when we created this first animation, our first walker guy, so let's bring that atlas back up. Oops, not the atlas, sorry. Um, here, the walk sequence. So you can see it's made up of, you know, 31 different frames. What we often wanna do is actually have multiple animations. So we can come back here and go uh, add animation group, and we'll call this one Idle. By the way, I really wish you could edit by double clicking uh, instead of having to go down here to change the frames. So if we want to do an idle frame, I'm just going to set its first image to the very first frame of our walk animation. So basically this guy right here. So you'll see, and I believe I also could have, uh, maybe not. Um, so now we have a single frame of animation for our idle and we can go ahead and now back to our main collection. So instead of this guy, you know, for right now we've got it so it's automatically walking. Like so, we can change that now to say, no, I want you to be idle instead. And now we'll play that non-animation. Now there are ways to switch between these things. Uh, there's coding abilities. We can basically say, play this animation. When this animation ends, automatically call back this code, um, etc. There's a lot we can do code-wise. Unfortunately, it's its own topic. Now, the nice thing is it's the next topic. Next thing we're gonna get into is something called message passing. And it's a very important concept in the default engine, but it's kind of its own topic and it kind of gets a little bit off what we're doing here. So I'm gonna probably carry on this tutorial into that tutorial. So if you're wondering, well, how do I go about doing this stuff in code? Don't worry, we're gonna get back to that. But you use message passing for a whole lot more than just animation, but it is a good example to go with. And so for me to continue down that road, I'd kind of be doing two tutorials in one. So I'm gonna cut this one off right here, right where we are. Now, as you can see, the animation functionality built in is quite simple. Now there's another thing that I'm not gonna to cover today. I may not cover this at all, but I want you to be aware of it. Um, sprite animation is not your only option. You've also got the ability to bring in 
something called a spine scene file or a spine model file. Now spine is a 2D IK based animation system. It's very, very cool. I actually looked at it, uh, let's see spine name from scratch. Um, I did a, a, a look at it already, including a video, but this is spine in action. And it basically allows you to define a 2D shape using bones and then do uh, playback animations with it. So I think I've got an animation here. see so there you can see so you can do simple animations using built-in shapes like so now if you're interested uh, I did this full review here I'll show you how to use the code under also a video so if you want to learn more about spine the option is out there but the default um, game engine has the ability to use spine animations out of the box as well so if you need something a little bit more advanced than just um, you know a flipbook style frame by frame sprite animation spine is also supported I'll link that down below. So if you want to learn more about Spine, I'll have that link down below. It'll also link in the, the main tutorial itself. So um, it's not an area we're going into today, but I do want you to be aware of. And that's basically it. That is um, animation in the fold. It's very straightforward, very simple. Uh, we're 16 minutes in and pretty much covered it all, except for the programming side of thing, which we will see in the next part. So please do stay tuned. Um, if you enjoyed this, please do click like and subscribe. We do all kinds of news, tutorials, etc., on this channel all the time. Uh, of course, your feedback is always appreciated. So let me know in the comments down below. Um, that's it for now. See you all later. Bye.